<laughs> yeah, it goes ahead and does that to you, right? So um, you let me know. Yeah, we're good. Okay. So what happens is I have this little, uh, I created this hotkey that whenever I press uh, certain keys, it would just go ahead and create some folders for me. So it just goes ahead and creates some folders and some files uh, based on a condition that I have, like, uh, well, a preference that I have. And again, make it, I want you to really understand that this is preference. It's not like the best way to do it. Um, I have a little GUI that asks me for the project name, my project, where I want to put it. I'm going to put it right there. I'm going to create it. Um, the script goes ahead and creates a little bit of a folder. I think, maybe. Just didn't do it. Braver than me sharing your downloads folder. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Yeah, it doesn't. I I don't mind. So it creates this little folder with the name of the project, whatever name that is. And when I have it in uh, my editor, it could be anything. Uh, I just created um, basically some info files, which might be an, an HTML or a written license, which I could just dump a license in it, depending on what the project might be. So I just dump a license in it a versioning file that I'm going to use to keep track of the version and probably auto updating the script. And here in, I have three folders, documentation, videos, if I'm going to do tutorials on it, documentation, if I'm going to explain what it does, and the source folder. This is where I really work. And my source is divided in three folders and the main script. So the project, this is where I have my script. I have a folder for creating tests. I usually try to do unit testing if possible. If not, I just create simple scripts that test whatever I'm trying to do. Resources is just a folder that usually contains my icons, my you know DLLs, well, sorry, icons and other images and stuff like that. I just put them there to create a DLL later on. And my library folder that is gonna contain anything that is an include. And the reason why I have the name lib instead of includes is because I then can just simply say my library like this and it just gets included. So uh, that's the reason why I use the name lib. I don't like the name lib, <laughs> but AutoHotKey has a preference for it. So that's the reason why I do it. So in general, this is my setup. It doesn't mean that that's the best. It, you just have to figure out what's the best for you. But usually I like building it this way. When I finish with my project and I go ahead and compile it, the compiled code goes outside of it. It goes out here. And then I just make a zip file with the readme, the license, and the project. That's the three files that I usually share in a compiled form nothing else. So everything else stays, oh, probably the documentation if I need the documentation, but that's it. So Bare this, minimum, at least one folder. Good God, don't put everything in the same folder. What do you mean? Yeah. <laughs> Some people have, you know, one folder that they put everything. Everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so, that's not, that's not so, a good uh, thing there. So you talked about your dislike of the, the lib folder name. Um, yeah. Um, so maybe you're interested in knowing that I solved that a different way. Um, everything I put in my so-called lib folder, which is usually called something else every time, I have a, uh, I have watch folder. And every time it's a new file, I it add just goes it, ahead and, yeah. I, I add it to a list uh, in, of includes, and I use a universal include file. So the path is already figured out by the script and it's appended and all I include is my include file in, in the top of my script and it automatically is referencing anything else wherever I put it. That is right. Now that those are different ways of doing it and, and you went the extra mile of watching the folder automatically. Um, in my case, when I use libraries, what I do is that I clone or create sub modules of them. Um, so I'm, I have kind of like a different workflow so that 
whenever I make changes to my modules, it gets updated automatically in different locations of my system. So yeah, that's that's a very good. Um, it depends on how you work, right? Yep. I'm lazy, and I use the um, the global library folder, which is the my documents slash auto hotkey slash lib. Yep. I use that for everything, update everything in there, and then all of that gets backed up to Dropbox and everything else so that I don't lose it. But yeah, I just, it's so much easier to work from a central area for all of your, your core includes like your main classes for XML or SQLite or whatever it is that you have. And then just use the folder and then the live folder under that folder for the all of the little library files that you have for that particular uh, project. Yep. The, the other thing that we just did um, with with Isaiah's computer of mine was, which a lot of people have seen on my computer, I have a B drive, right? Well, now I have an A drive as well. And what I do is I create a shortcut to a given root folder. It's under Dropbox, but it allows like Isaiah and I to have the same exact path. So when we're trying to do yes. stuff, it just simplifies when I say, give me this file. I don't have to try to figure out where is it under where is his path, path. Yeah. my path. It's the same path. So yeah. it, it's a nice little cheap way to, to kind of circumvent that. And I used to have like five computers in, in my desktop, as well as everything under I worked in on a hotkey was all under Dropbox. So I'd save my something to a desktop at work. I'd go home and it's on my desktop computer at home. And it was just such a time saver. And all my shortcuts for launching folders and files, those are all under Dropbox, all synced under that same path. And that allows me to have one toolbar for launching stuff and everything is, it's basically Always in the same place. Yeah. Awesome. Well, awesome, everyone. Um, I think we're done. <laughs> <laughs> there anyone else if they want to say anything, anything yeah yeah i mean i'm happy to hang out for a while i think i'll take a little break off the you know around the restroom or something but um great turnout i mean especially i know for for some of you guys over in europe and asia and wherever yeah like, your Cali. time zones dude <laughs> dimitri what time is it for you man like is it <laughs> 4 30 a.m for eugene Hold and, and march I, I know as well it's, it's uh it's crazy times for you two um I, off the top of my head guy also yeah and UG, yeah i know for a lot of people it's it's really really late, late yes so, but um wow you know. <laughs> this was a lot of fun we you know i tried doing this a couple years ago it was right before the stupid covid hit and that put the kibosh on it at the point in time but that was going to try to be like in person actually and then um uh, you know, Put it off and then i was talking with tom from tab nation who's he's who's listed here is what was it tab something um <laughs> taptation i think it's a, it's a little typo but um yeah we were just on a live call which we do on fridays and we're like hey you know let's what about doing a hk con and uh and then here we are so it was really yeah. great the you know number of people showing up um and it, it's just, it's awesome. I've had a couple calls where I've had seven or eight experts on and we'll discuss a topic. And it's so interesting to get the different perspectives. It's just, it's so much better than just, you know, I, which rarely do I ever do videos anymore just by myself, right? It's, it's Isaiah and I, or, or Maestri or whoever, even Tank, we're in ta and Tom um, and Jean and Lon too, right? We're talking with each other and discussing a thing and I can't tell you how many times like you learn so much more when you're working with someone else to some degree. Right. Yeah. And it's just, it's really helpful to find out, find out what I call a workout buddy, you know, for programming and just have it where yeah, every week. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> yeah every other day. Yeah, we, we do, we do. We, you say, let's do this every week. We do this every week. We have a free call on Fridays. Um, Friday call. Yeah, so we, we do something very similar to this. It's not the, the problem with the Friday calls is that they're just one hour. So they're very short. We just answer a few questions. We do have this second section, which is the HK Heroes, in which after the free hour, we have a second section for a group of people so that they can chime in more questions. But yeah, we definitely do this every Friday. We do about two hours of this. And usually somebody's working on a project and they have a specific question, they come in, 
we try to give a little bit of a of a an idea of at least where to go or where to find information if we cannot answer the question right there. So if you really want to do that, just drop by. Is uh, YouTube is streamed live in YouTube, so you just connect, have us there, and just you know hang out. Yeah, yeah, and um, obviously you know you can uh, email us also. Yeah, the, the heroes after show. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We we do yeah. that. Um, so it's a paid. You know, it's six dollars a month, so it's not expensive. It's not. It's yeah. It, the thing is about that one is it's not on stream to youtube so it's pr private in that sense if it's our group but we don't stream it to youtube so exactly it's meant for people who probably do not want to share their code online with everybody so it is a very uh dedicated group of people and and we hang out very often like, like they have felt uh you know cam camaraderie that we, we, we like to talk a little bit about it and, and and everybody feels cool um and it's a close group and it feels great you know so you're I, I welcome to join Brian's point here is is which is what I tell his ace too is half the time it will not half the time you know I often come to him and say I'm trying to solve this how do we fix it and he'll figure it out then he'll reach out to me going I'm stuck on this and half the time when he's explaining it he'll solve it himself because your brain works differently when you are talking and saying what you're doing your brain works totally differently than when you're actually programming by yourself right so yeah. Um, Brian was saying, I think he was writing an email and in the writing it of the question, he actually solved it himself, which is, <laughs> you know, part of that's what the whole rubber ducky, right? Have a thing to talk yeah, to. Exactly. Uh, this is, you know, I think we'll definitely have this plan another one for, I don't know if we'll do it in a year, but um, I mean, you know, other than maybe shorter, right? Um, but <laughs> it's it's been a lot of fun. We were doing the webinars. It's just not a lot of people showed up. Um, so, mm -hmm. and we kind of ran out of topics to teach on a given subject. But having the get togethers, uh, it, actually, that's what Jackie and I, when we first started doing it, we're like, let's just have a hangout because that was a long time ago. And we'll just, just talk and uh, it's fun. Yeah, but yeah. yeah, well, not so, everyone's yeah. available Saturdays, Ben. I mean, I wish, you know. Yeah. That, um, and, and that's the funny part is too, is, you know, part of the core. So there's in auto hockey, like there's, I kind of think of it as two or what younger people who are into gaming and do that kind of stuff. And then there's um, other people who are really using it for work. And of course, actually Tom tab nation, his core, I think is more on the gaming aspect of stuff and mine are more about using Excel and, you know, office environments, but um, trying to pick a time that works for everybody, especially because it's a global thing. It's really hard. So we appreciate you guys all for staying here. That is right, uh, Eugene, like the people who go yeah. ahead and <laughs> they were, you know, doing gaming. And then when they find Absolutely. themselves at work, they say, hey, what I was doing there, right. I can do it here. Right. You know, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm kind of like in the middle. I, I do uh, automation for gaming, but I also do automation, uh, automation for work. So, yeah. Yeah, absolutely, Brian. A lot of people will actually force themselves to give a lecture on a given topic to force them to fully understand what it is they're presenting on, right? That's a really yeah, yeah. great point of a way to ensure that you have learned something thoroughly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> or look it. like a fool, I guess is the other well, option. <laughs> you can have two options in there. Does anyone else, while we're here, like I said, I'm happy to, to hang out for a little bit. Does anyone have something they wanna work on as opposed to just chatting about other topics? Give me just a minute. Marche, I, I, I see you haven't said anything, but I don't know if you've done anything lately with your, your extended keyboard, which was a really cool webinar that you've, and your hot string tool. That was really awesome. Anthony's out of the beach apparently now. He's, he's got his sunglasses on. He's, he's ready to go. Oh, interesting, Dimitri. That's awesome, Brian. I, that's what I, my whole stance is also. The the Friday calls, actually, which used to happen a lot of the webinars too, was I even I'd be presenting on something and I would learn a really, I'm like, a, you can do what? You know, it's it's sometimes it's amazing how you, you can miss something. What were we doing the other day, Isaiah, where... I showed something and you're like, you can do what? Um, it, it was just a surprise. 
AHK with Teams. I haven't tried it. I'd say the UI automation approach should work with that, with Teams. What are you trying to do with it? You, uh, he raised his hand earlier. I just was curious to find out what it is that you would want to do with Teams. Um, Aaron, on the keyboard thing, we just did a video the other day, which I mean, from seeing your other posts, I think you're pretty advanced, right? But um, on how to discover, you know, keys, e an easier way than what I had been originally learned. Oh, and Ben, I see you raised your hand. Um, so, yeah. I'm just going to look at you and wait. I'm kidding. <laughs> I, I clicked the button to ask to unmute. You should be able to unmute. Yeah. There we go. I'll, I'll ask my team's question. Oh. Uh, I used to do this with Skype. Uh, you're in you're in one of these group meetings at work, and you're not really that active in the meeting. And then somebody says to you, "Well, Ben, what do you think?" And then you're not even looking at the screen. So I had a hotkey that I could oh, hit yeah. to quickly bring up the active screen. Because it had a special title and a you know an ID I could grab, but in Teams all the windows have the same name on them in a way. It's not an easy yeah. way to find which is the active window. Um, I, my way of finding it is just cycling through the windows. I think I take the back window or something like that. I forgot, mm. but I wasn't sure if someone else has found a better way to. I, I I could definitely just chime in on that and say, have you tried using the PID of the of the program so basically what happens is that when you load teams the first time you grab with out of hotkey the pid of that program try to activate it with it can you well when i use the the spy tool every team's window has the same id the pid ahk pid yeah so it's a it's a, it's a number it's actually yeah, a it's four digit gonna... number and um... it would be for the executable just for that Four digits. Wow. I must well, have a lot of processes. I've got five. Uh, <laughs> yeah, mine's yeah. five digits. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so all the team windows have the same PIDs, what you're saying? I can't imagine they do. Yes, they do. Okay. Oh, I'll be damned. Uh -huh. That's I, I think it's a web browser or something is what it's been. Oh, yeah, it's on. all just web based. I mean, it's yeah. probably Chromium based now that yeah. they're you know switched over to Edge. So probably the, the, the UIA tool might help you automate that. That's that would be my go to. So the oh. UIA is the accessibility library. So that can allow you to identify some controls in the window that you want to activate. And once you get that, then you can go ahead and bring the focus in it. So is a web based interface going to have controls on it that I can find? Not particularly, not easily. Um, Hold on. I noticed that the main login. The class NN is Chrome underscore widget win underscore 11. I'm sure yours is probably a different number, but I would also check to see if the class NN is a little bit different. Maybe between windows, I don't have, I just have the main login window in front of me, but maybe they have a, uh, a separate, when you click on it, it'll say focus control. And under that focus control, it should say class NN colon and then Chrome underscore widget or widget win underscore 11. I think or I think whatever for, the for Chrome, it would be the same. It doesn't matter which tab or uh, thing you have open, but the UIA, yes, it doesn't matter uh, if it is Chromium or something, you, you will be able to see the controls if teams have um, access to the accessibility. Uh, I'm sure they do. So I'm sure they do, and it is very likely that you can just simply point at it and see what it is. We can actually, uh, well, I don't know who else has Teams and has the accessibility inspector, but yeah, it I would don't. be a matter of just looking at it, grabbing one control and saying, I could demonstrate with another program, not Teams, and I will tell you more or less, and, which is also Chromium based. So well, that should be good. Huh? Yeah. So let me go ahead and uh share my screen real quick i guess you can watch it and we can open spotify and we can use the accessibility insights so this particular window yeah. and let's go ahead and take a look at let me just one second let me took a look at the windows spy right here so windows spy for this window, so for this guy, is a Chrome widget 
zero, right? So this is a Chrome widget, which is very likely similar to what you're looking at on your end with Teams. But the accessibility control here, I could definitely point at something and notice that here on the, on the right side, I get the region called Good Evening, okay? So I am able to access individual controls and uh, images inside the window. And I could use this basically to target that window. And after I found that property, then I could just send it a focus, you know, or at least get the, uh, uh, the class or whatever else to go ahead and bring it to the top frame, which again, what I'm saying is like, I think using the accessibility control is a very simple way for you to do this. Um, there is a library, let me just one second. Uh, where is it? Yeah, let me stop this. If you go to the URL over my head. You'll it'll. We have, I have links to the GitHub and to um, the forum. Right. And we have we've done Descalada. I'm not sure if he's still here now. But if he is, it's really late. He's in Estonia, but um, he's no, he I... did some videos with us, and we walk through you know how to use it. Right. So this library. We have examples with many different programs, especially Chrome and stuff like that. And uh, for example, for Spotify, the main idea, and this is the point why I'm trying to kind of like let you know this is available because probably you didn't know, um, I create the interface, the UI automation, right? And it, this has an auto set, set focus um, we set it to false, but if we want, we can just not have that. And what that does is that as soon as you try to click on an element or something, it brings the window to the front. Okay. Now, as I usually do not like that particular option, I set it to false. But in your case, that might be exactly what you need. You just have to click on an element on that window and it will bring the window to the front. Well, now, um, did you want to say something? I'm sorry. Yes, well, um what I was going to say was definitely watch the videos that we did, because even though Isaiah is, is a great programmer with the, the stuff we walked through with Descalada, we saved so much time by learning, you know, some tips and tricks because right. it it's, you know, it's a bit, the, the sad part is it's a bit complicated. It's not as simple as like calm is and very direct. It's there's, and especially like, what was it? Um, what was the, it wasn't, what was the other one? The, the chat for, the talking for um not sure which one you mean like teams but um skype oh skype right having problems where it's like oh we had to kind of take a step back and find a different window that actually had the path yeah because and actually yes teams is from microsoft it might have the same issues so definitely take a look at that video but in general what i just wanted to point out is after you get the element for the window which whatever window it is, right? You can find a specific control with a function. And after you have that element, then you can do stuff with it, like clicking on it or bringing it to the front and stuff like that. So basically that's the idea of what you're trying to do. And I think the UIA interface, especially as Spotify is a Chromium based thing, I can definitely tell, say it, should be good it should be easy to work with it so it's not going to be that hard to go ahead and try to figure it out unless there are some specific conditions that might happen you know oh to dimitri awesome. yeah i hope that that actually answered your question at least gave you a pointer to where to look for Yeah, cool. Is there any other questions? I saw Marche. I, hopefully, I'm still remembering how to say your his name, your name properly. I see you're still here. Um, but talking about uh, having an extension shop. Yeah, I, I I'm working on a tool that's similar to QAP, but it'll be where you can have basically plugins and allow them to share with other people. Yeah. Now, TN, I'm not really sure what he's so well, Top Nation maybe, <laughs> is saying that you will have to find the UIA control, but you have to grab them via the handle of the exposed controls. And that's the situation that 
Um, if you're going to work with that, then you have to keep that in mind that sometimes you cannot grab the control directly. You will have to grab it through a control that is already there and then go to the main Skype window. So it is kind of like a, you have to, if that problem arises, right. Awesome, everyone. Anything else? Are we good? This has been a lot of fun. Um, very enjoyable. Yeah. A lot of people had some good, good comments, good learnings. <laughs> Tom, I don't know if you're drinking or what. Like, I'm not understanding what you're writing. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know what he means. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a... <laughs> yeah not gonna happen. Oh, awesome, everyone. This has been a lot of fun. Thank you all for being here. Um, like I said, I'll, I'll after I um render each one and whatever, I'll share them back. And I know I think Tom's gonna push them to his channel as well. And uh, but we'll we'll do some sort of a follow up survey or something at least just just to to see. Like I said, what what should we have covered? We've done more programming. Um, the problem is it gets very specific, right? Like yeah. very very specific, and that's what I was trying to keep it general enough to be interesting for most helpful people. for most people. Yes. <laughs> but I gave I, I gave him access. Yeah, I gave him. <laughs> I tried to give him the 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 access. And probably there was an issue with the with the system. I tried several times. Hey. There, there you go. Oh my God. <laughs> I <can> talk. <laughs> Hello, everybody. <laughs> yeah, welcome back. Time. Yeah, we're done. I actually I'm sent you. Back. I sent you the freaking <laughs> thing like four times. Oh, well, he's been here. Well, he's, every no, time. no, but I mean, like, unmuting. He, he couldn't yeah. unmute himself, right? Yeah, I kept. Yeah, I tried too. Yeah. Yeah. I know uh, Joe has to uh, push it forward. I was like, what? <laughs> but yeah. I'm at the end. <laughs> you just as the after party starting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't normally talk a lot, so this has been a long day for me of talking. Yeah, that sucks, man. I wanted to be there for everything. Uh, so if anybody wants to uh, do uh, year two, let us know. Yeah, sure. Actually, well, one guy was saying every Friday. <laughs> like every week, right? So they, every other day, you know. Yeah, every other day. <laughs> I have a life, so. <laughs> uh, oh, that's great. That's great. I actually. I mean, enjoy. once a month is cool with me. If it's. I don't uh, have a life, but I'm lazy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, same, same, there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I think to some extent, because we're all here, we we all one is we're 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 go getters in the sense of we don't settle like hey we'll find a way to solve the problem. But two is like Bill Gates says like he'll always hire you know an efficient programmer because he, he a lazy programmer right because they're the ones that are going to find the best way to optimize whatever right and I think that's one of the things, <laughs> yeah that's right all of a sudden get you know I had a lot of different jobs where they expected me to do some mundane task and I'm like there's there's no way I'm doing what you're saying you know I'm going to automate it. <laughs> There you go. All right. Anything else exciting going on? Not really. I have my uh, my IDE. It's uh, coming along. Apparently, people are. Uh, I got actually uh, emails, and they're like, "Yo, your your IDE is amazing." I'm like, I was doing it for fun. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, all right, cool. Basically, uh, a lot of things are like that. You just do it for fun. And then somebody else is like, oh, yeah. my God, this is so great. And I'm like, I did nothing. Yeah. Oh <laughs> um, regarding Eugene's comment, which is awesome, he says, I'm, I'm, I'm too lazy to do the actual work, but I'm not too lazy to figure out how to automate it. Uh, it. It is part of the thing. I don't know if you've studied, like, you know, gamification, right? But finding a way to make it kind of fun, find a way to make your job fun, find a way to do the mundane tasks, make it fun, you know, and to, to me, you know, automating it, even if it's programming, which I don't want to do, it's much funner than doing the mundane task of actually the repetitive work, right? So, yeah, it's a really good point. 
Yeah, it's right. about, uh, how much uh, you put in. Like if I spend 10 hours coding, how much am I going to save? So you have to like calculate that stuff. De depending on what your goal is, but I agree with you, Tom. Right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, if your goal is, the goal is to learn the thing like you're doing with your IDE, right? Sure. You yeah. never would have taken on that project to say like, oh, I, I want an editor, right? It's, <laughs> you were trying to learn some stuff like Chad did with Studio. Well, and Isaiah did with his Auto Hockey Toolkit, probably, I'm yeah, guessing. That's exactly how I just started on something that I wanted to do. And then I said, no, let me learn how to do it better. <laughs> and that was it. It's more a learning experience than actually wanting to do it. Yeah, forcing yourself uh, to learn. <laughs> Which is what I always tell people too, is put it on your calendar or something. Does this, you know, people say, I don't have time. You, you do, we all do. <laughs> if you don't understand how we work, your task will expand to how much time you allow it to, right? If you have something that, you, you know, like, oh, it's going to take before, condense it down some and suddenly you have extra time. And you know what? You'll still get the damn thing done. It's just the way that our we work. Joe, Joe, we're lazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and I'm included, right? I'm, I'm, I'm in there. But just acknowledge it and put it on your calendar and be like, this is, you know, at, at TI, I was automating 20 to 30%. I'm sorry, I, let me rephrase that. I was spending 20 to 30% of every day learning. Why? Because I had automated so much of my job that like I allowed, no one had any clue what I was doing, right? But I was just learning and it allowed me to learn more and learn more and learn more. But it's because I blocked the time. And that was the thing, I would block time and just be like, people don't necessarily know what you're doing, right? Just, <laughs> yeah, and well, actually yeah. sometimes you're forced to block time to learn something right. that you didn't you know. Right. So in my case, and, and if you are well, still here, I could just show you something, I don't know. Um, real quickly, yeah. the whole thing for the HK Con, you know, so Tom, me and Isaiah, for what the last six months <laughs> yeah it was a long time wednesday morning we had an hour meeting and sometimes we skipped it right yeah. but it was on the calendar and so we would come on and, and do a little bit every week yeah so let me let me show you one of the th those things that i learned recently and i didn't know how to do this and well, I, uh before he goes uh yeah. i was gonna say um so originally i learned hk i never heard of it I was like, oh yeah, this seems cool. Uh, so I present it to my bosses, HK, and it was all send commands. <laughs> That's all I knew. I had two days to figure out how to do it. That's what I got. <laughs> yeah, but it's okay. So like, oh, yes. but, it, but it worked, right? It worked. And then from then on, yeah. I started learning how to do it a little bit better. And uh, this is just an example. This little function here, which is a few lines of code. Um, this is uh, in version two. And as you can see, the, the, the coding is not that different than a hard key version one. There's a few different things, but basically everything looks similar. Um, but what was, somebody said like, oh, I need this thing. I have never done that. And what it does is that it gets the mouse position shows a window where you're at. And um, depending on fa how far away your mouse is to some coordinates of that window, then it says transparency to it. And after you go above some threshold, it goes ahead and hides it. And basically, it, it, I am really bad at math. So that was what happened. I, I'm really bad at math, but when I start thinking, okay, when the mouse position is less than my X position, what I want to do, if not, I want to do something else. And in the end, the result was, and this was tied to some selection. So what, whenever you select some text, it goes ahead and the text that you selected the text, it shows the pop-up window, whatever that would be. And now whenever I move the mouse, the opacity of that window would change based on that. So I had to figure out how to know where, when I am inside the window, inside the window, that doesn't work, but outside of it, then it goes ahead and does that. So it was, it was a very interesting experience. It is not a lot of code, but when you deal with this type of concepts, okay, um, you, you learn some interesting stuff 
about how you can go ahead and automate uh, certain tasks. In this case, I wanted to automate the setting of the, the transparency. And in the end, uh, we got it to work <laughs> in a way that it, it is actually interesting. Um, but basically, guys, again, you might think this is difficult. Let me tell you, I had no clue what I was doing until I started doing it. You know what, Isaiah, which brings me up another point where what were we working on? Was it the data? It was the database for Kelly's project. And yes. we were both, we were trying to solve how we're going to build the SQL database and we're talking how we're going to approach it and whether we're going to do stuff in the cloud versus without a hotkey. And him and I are going, and we're, which normally we don't, right? But we were just not making it clear. And then finally, you know, we were like, hey, let's draw a diagram. In the second we drew a diagram and started talking to it, it was suddenly, it was so much easier for us easier. to understand what's going on. But like in your example there, you're doing, you said, I suck at math. You're doing math, which reminds me, maybe I should be doing your paychecks from now going forward. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> if instead of doing math, you were to take what you were doing there and to actually draw it and start yes. thinking about X and Y, like suddenly it's not math. Like it's you, know, you know what? It, that's exactly what happened. When I was talking to him, I showed the GUI and I said like, oh, hold on. What I want to happen when the mouse move this way? How do I calculate that? So I was doing it visually. Right. And then I translated that into, right. okay, so when the X is at this position, I know that this is this thing. When I want it to be this here. It's, and then I started adding variables and yeah adding and subtracting. And in the end, I got that thing. <laughs> you know, and <laughs> you, you shrunk it down to where instead of it's, I'm doing 80 things at once, how do I, how do I just do, I just need to do this one thing. Yes. Right? And you're like, basically, that's not yeah. hard, right? Well now, okay, what's the next one? You broke it down into baby steps, right? And then yes. suddenly anything in baby steps is doable. Yeah, that is right. <laughs> will AI replace this? Yes, it will. Definitely me. <laughs> um, I, I was UG. I saw his his answer earlier. I was like he was saying he had automated some stuff, and then he couldn't get buy in from people in his company um, about auto hockey, and he later left. Uh, and I was like, you know, it's yeah. I've had several bosses tell me not to automate things, and I learned to stop even saying I am and just do stuff and later ask for forgiveness and set a permission. And then, <laughs> well, I don't see the result. Like result yeah. yeah. But um but I'll be damned if I'm gonna manually do something when I have a way to automate it. You know, I'm like yeah like you said I I finally end up quitting just because I'm like I got so frustrated. I'm like, you know what, whatever. <laughs> that is right. That is right. Okay, guys, look, um, I have to run. Uh, for me, it has been a pleasure. Actually, I enjoyed this, uh, this meetup. It, it was actually great. Um, I, I liked uh, <laughs> the way how everybody interacted and the turnout was more than I had expected. Me too. <laughs> yeah, so thank you very much for being here and thank you for joining us for this one. I hope that everybody could join us for the next time, right? <laughs> yeah. Thanks, everyone. Bye. We'll see you around.